it's the next day. I just got done calling Jared, told him to come on over. We're gonna finish this project up. We're gonna slap those B2 audio mids and highs in his doors. He's been riding around with his raw door panels for like a month. I do the trooper. The problem is, is that the door panels are made of sheet metal, it's flimsy, it looks like someone had already cut into it at one point. So we're gonna get on the computer and we're gonna make some HDPE rings for those B2 audio separates. We'll mount that HDPE ring in the door, make it secure, we'll sound in it with some second skin all around it. We'll put the 6.5 into the HDPE ring, securely mount that, run the crossovers, we'll cut a couple holes for the tweeters and uh, and we're really just about there. We got gains to set after that, maybe a little bit of cleanup. Gonna have to measure this speaker out, make a quick little drawing, jump up over on the CNC, carve it out, and uh, when he gets here, we can pretty much get busy right away. All right, let's go. Just about getting ready to sit down, measure the stuff out, and I realized I just did some B2 Audio 6.5 not too long ago for the Jaybirds ride. So, I've already got it ready to go. So I'm just gonna grab me a little bit of HDPE, and we're gonna fire this thing up. These are really nice mids. I've always had good luck with them. They've always sounded great. We can't just willy-nilly throw them into that sheet metal door panel and screw them in with some sheetrock screws and hope they're gonna sound good and then blame them if they don't. You gotta do this shit right. You may not have to have a CNC machine or a laser to do it right. You could do this with a router. You could do it with a jigsaw. The speakers are only gonna sound as good as the person installing them, so watch what I do here. Got a little piece of scrap, machine grade, HDPE. It's not super pretty, but it's great for stuff like this because it will be pretty when I'm done. countersunk mounting holes so this thing can be attached to the vehicle and the screws won't get in the way of the speaker but uh yeah i hope the speaker actually fits let's try it out that one's sitting right over here so as it turns out the speaker didn't really fit in there it was really close it was super tight but without deforming the basket or something 
it wasn't going to go in there. It was just a little bit shy. So all I really needed to do was throw a little tiny bevel on this inside right here, right where the basket was touching and it fits pretty good. So I haven't done it to this one yet because I wanted to show you guys that I had to do that. The reason why I'm showing you this is because these are the things that installers have to deal with when they're doing custom stuff. Always a good idea to show some respect to your local installer who does a good job because these are the things that happen when we get through them. That's like perfect. Just enough to get past that little spot that was in the way. Look at that. Is that right side up? Yeah. Beautiful. Now all we gotta do is mount this into the vehicle we got the counter sunk holes like I showed you. We'll put some second skin around it, deaden the door a little bit, mount this speaker into the ring, run the wires. He's playing. He should be here pretty soon. I already called him. These are actually going to be threaded with 832 Torx bolts. So. It's gonna be ultra nice, no half stepping over here. Probably can't see that little guy right there, but. I'll try to zoom in on it when I'm editing, but the focus only really gets my dirty fingernails. There we go. Yeah. Hey man, I'm working man's fingernails right there. So I'm gonna thread this up real quick. We ain't just jamming no sheetrock screws into this thing. You guys move out of here. Other side. Yep, another one right here. Oh yeah. Couple crossovers. Those are gonna go on the door panels. I have real cutting oil, but I actually like this stuff. Plus, I like the smell of it. Of course, good. Reminds me of my old bike chain when I was younger. This way, not only will it cut the threads really nice, but when we go to put the fasteners in later, they're gonna they're gonna be nice and smooth as well. So. So you see what I'm doing here? We're going right about to where the thread's in. I'm not putting any pressure on it. I'm letting it pull itself down and bring itself back up. So if you want to do the rest of these, just like I did, here's your reverse button right here. Okay? Keep your drill as straight as you can. Like up a little bit more. There, like that. There you go. Bring it, bring it straight down. Let it, let it pull itself all the way in. Hit reverse. Pop it back out. Boom. Done. You got threads. Oh yeah. Yep. Nice. Repeat. Good to go. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.
Yeah, you don't ever want it to get to a drilling type of action because then it's going to strip its own threads out and then it won't uh, be no good. So you're creating threads. Keep that drill straight. Okay, you're a little crooked on the drill, man. Bring it back up. The HTP you can influence a little bit, so put it back in there and like straighten it out and send it back in again. We'll up just a little bit. I know you can't see from where I'm standing. Mine was probably crooked too. Because when you're standing, there you go like that. There you go. There you go, there you go. Yeah. When I'm standing right above it, it's kind of, sometimes it's hard to tell too, especially when you do a bunch. But yeah, I'm standing over here looking. Yeah, you're good. That looks good. Go a little further than that. There you go. Loading rocket science, but how many times have you done this before? Never. Never? You've never threaded a hole before? Uh, never. Created threads? Uh-uh. There you go, man. Like I said, this is still a learning experience. Even if I do a lot of the crucial stuff, it's still learning. That's it. Got them all? Yeah. Alright, now take one of those screws right there and just thread it in with your finger and tell me if it works. They're little, so you may even you may need to use the Allen wrench if you can't. They're hard to hold on to oh, and twist. There you go. Nice. Nice and good. Yep. So there you have it. All right, I think we need to back your car in. Yep. Open up your doors and mount those things into your doors and start wiring. What do you think? Let's get it going. Good shit. Let's go. The rings are done. Three countersunk holes for the actual mount and threaded holes for the speakers. Now we're gonna grab some second skin, put it on the door panel, and kind of sandwich some of that stuff in between. Seems to work really good doing that. And then we're gonna grab those door panels over there, pop a few tweeters in those, run a few wires, we'll be ready to start playing. Time to sandwich some more of this second skin. In between. We don't have to go too hog wild on this just yet. Right now I'm sealing the door, making it a little bit more rigid where the speaker is moving. And if you have any rattling problems, we can add more later. But getting you on the road and getting it sounding great first. That's our main thing. So we're all patched up right here. Make this hole a little bit better once the ring is on. Make sure it's clocked right so it looks good even though it's behind the door panel. <laughs> Someone will say something. The V2 wasn't straight. You know that'll be the first thing said.
see if that's enough to reach down and grab the bottom of that panel. Oh my god. Yeah. That was all good. So double check my hand. Yeah. So the reason I'm doing it this way. That door panel ever, ever has to come off again. Mm. You can un just unhook these little connectors. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. And the wires won't have to be cut. None of that stuff. So. Jared's ride for right now. There's always stuff that can be done. We're gonna set his gains. I'm gonna tidy his wiring up. We're gonna clean the acrylic. He had a little bit of smoke on it from the smoke test, and he should be on his way. It already sounds good when the gains ain't even set, so I can't imagine what it's gonna sound like when we put the DD1 and the CC1 on it. But right now, we gotta pull it apart just a little bit to get to the gains and to clean the panel. Okay, this thing's up and out of the way. 
I can take it all the way out of the vehicle. But all I want to do is set the gains and drop it back down. Well, Everything's flat, right, on that deck? Yep. We left it alone from last time? Right, yep. Still on track one? Okay. We are on track one. Okay, turn it up to 38, our number. 38. 38. Yep. yep there. You there? Yep. Okay, turn that base knob up all the way. All the way. Yes. All right, all right, all right. It's up all the way? Yeah. Okay. Track three. That gain is set. Go ahead and turn your base knob all the way down. All the way down. Look at that. Beautiful. Turn it all the way up. up. All the way pegged. Yep. There you have it. Turn it all the way down. Yes, okay, turn your volume all the way down now. Yep. All right, uh, back to track two. All right. Yeah, we're good. Second set of bridge channels. I just left it as it was, and I'm going to drop this down to 4.5 just like the other one is. There we go. Now, I just want to set your crossovers real quick to make sure that they're matching each other. Mm -hmm. The doors will sound a lot better if they're playing the same frequencies. Or, and I shouldn't say the same frequencies, that they're rolling off at mm -hmm. the same time as each other. So, we're going to do that next. Okay, start turning the volume up until I tell you to stop. We got signal, keep going. There you go, down one. Down one. Down one. Down one. Down one, yeah. there you go, right? So I had your crossover a little bit high. I'm just gonna turn it down. Okay. Right there, calibrated. Mm -hmm. That means it's right where I want it to be. I think I'm at 100 hertz. Uh, make sure you're on track 18 still. You're on track 18. Right there. All right, head on in there. This time we're gonna play track 16. Track 16 is 80 hertz and down. Well, it's actually 80 hertz, but your crossovers are 80 hertz and down, so that's what we were looking for. See how sensitive those are? Can you imagine not having the tools and thinking that you're gonna get it right? Never. So look at that, calibrated, 80 hertz. Money shot. They're done. Um, let's take a listen to it, and then we'll clean all this stuff up, and you're on your way, man, you're done. <laughs> so far, it sounds pretty good. Gonna give a quick wipe down and then it's time for the official test. Sounds good from out here, though, Jared. Yeah. All right, finally, for right now, we're finished. There is obviously lots more stuff to do. You can, it just never ends. But for right this very moment, for this week, we're done. It's playing, it's tuned as good as we can for his deck. His deck doesn't have very much processing power on it at all. I can't hardly do anything with it, so I think he's planning on a new deck, and we'll set his games again after he does that. So clean. I mean, you rode around, the games weren't set. Now the games yeah. and the crossovers are set pretty close. You're as good they as are. you can be for what you have for a head unit, little upgrades. But I wanna run some more second skin on your rear deck lid. I know we gotta take those old six by nines out, but that means we gotta pull your deck lid apart to get to them. So those six by nines or whatever those are in there gotta come out and we're gonna run a bunch of second skin on the rear deck lid as well. Oh, by the way, the trunk is on that little switch. So as soon as you shut it, those lights should go off automatically. Uh, we're not going to be able to see it because it's going to be... Hold on a second. Wait, wait. All right, go ahead and shut the trunk. Let's see if those lights go off. Oh, perfect. Hey, pop it open again one more time. Just to verify. Oh, uh, yep, just like that, automatically. All right, man, you're dialed in. Shut it again. We're going to listen to some bass. Let's bump some beats. Like I always say, I can't play these songs for very long because of copyright reasons. So I'm going to play it. We're going to play whatever the hell we want, but only for a couple seconds at a time. We're gonna play it longer than that, but when I go to edit, they're gonna hit the floor. So sorry about that. Anyways, let's bump it. Hey, Slump, ready to go? Why should I say yeah. black truck sounding like I got an alligator in the back? Not sure what 
what to play because they, everything's gonna get me busted on copyright. Just go back to that Steely Dan we were doing earlier. Uh I hope that sounds good when I edit that because that kick drum kicks so hard on that door just now. It's not like the drummer was in here. It's pretty good. It makes his love that shit. Enough teasing. Yeah. <laughs> Enough teasing. Enough yep, teasing. yep. Let's Fine. slam the hood shut yep. and uh, let's send you on your way, man. Yep, thank yep, you. Yep, Shit, man. Slam your trunk shut. You're done, man. Woo! All right, Jared, you're out of here, man. Have fun, man. Congratulations on the new beats. Yeah. <laughs> Slap that shit on the way out of here. Oh. Still need some second skin on the trunk. The trunk is actually not rattling as bad as the little flappers, the little air flappers that are inside of those trunks. I forgot all about that as well. So every time the bass hits, the, the flappers start flapping and makes all kinds of noise. So we're gonna have to make an effort to get in there and block those as well. But the car does sound awesome on the inside. So some more second skin on the rear trunk lid. We gotta remove those binines or whatever those things are. I think there's like sheetrock screws holding them in. Those gotta go. We'll make some more bass come into the cabin that Until way. Then, Thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying this little series with us. And um, I'm out of here. Mission accomplished.